Originally named Norma Jean Baker, Marilyn Monroe is one of the most well-known figures in all of Hollywood. Though her life started very rough, she quickly grew to stardom and became an icon. Despite being one of the most well-known figures in all Hollywood, her life ended tragically when she died at age 36. Marilyn was born in Los Angeles, California to a mother who suffered from paranoid schizophrenia. Because of this, her mother was in and out of mental hospitals her whole life and Marilyn grew up in foster care. Sadly, here she was abused and she dropped out of high school at only age 15. At age 16, Marilyn married her first husband, James Doherty, a merchant marine, in 1942. She did this to avoid going into another foster home and orphanage so that she could live on her own. When she started to rise to stardom, she divorced him in 1946. In 1954, she was married to baseball star Joe DiMaggio for nine months before the couple divorced. Marilyn's longest marriage was to playwright Arthur Miller. The relationship began while she was still married to Joe DiMaggio and the couple wed in 1956. Unfortunately, they very soon had problems when Marilyn had three miscarriages and the couple divorced about five years later. There are rumors that she had an affair with President John F. Kennedy and his brother Robert after famously singing Happy Birthday to him in 1962. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Happy birthday to you. Towards the end of her life, she suffered from depression and anxiety. She went to therapy for this and was prescribed medication to help her. Sadly, at age 36, she died of an overdose of these very drugs that were given to help her. There have been speculations that it was murder, but it is officially ruled a suicide. During World War II, while working in a factory, Marilyn was discovered by a photographer who wanted to take photos of women working to help raise morale. Because of this early modeling gig, she was given a contract with 20th Century Fox for six months, and she officially changed her name to Marilyn Monroe and dyed her hair her famous bleach blonde. However, this contract did not give her many roles, and she went back to modeling upon its end. One of these new photo shoots led to a small part in a new film, and got her more and more roles till she received another contract from 20th century in 1950. With this new contract, she appeared in many films and gained stardom. She made movies such as Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, where she famously sings, Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. A kiss on the hand may be quite continental, but diamonds are a girl's best friend. A kiss may be grand, but it won't pay the rental on your humble flat, or help you at the auto map. Men grow cold as girls grow old, and we all lose our charms in the end. But square cut or pear shape, these rocks don't lose their shape. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Business like show business. During the height of stardom, she married Joe DiMaggio, but upon their divorce, she started to rethink her career. She didn't like that she was always typecast as a dumb blonde or blonde bombshell. She... Oh, do you feel the breeze from the subway? Isn't it delicious? She wanted more serious roles because people started to think that she herself was a dumb blonde so she began acting lessons with Lee Strasberg. Because of this training, she became a better comedic actor and started starring in more serious films. She's crazy. What? They're all crazy. You try not to believe it because you need them. 
She's crazy. This is when she married Arthur Miller. And then she starred in Some Like It Hot, which is widely regarded as her best film. She won a Golden Globe for this performance as Best Actress. But one of her strengths is that she was drop-dead gorgeous, and she was hired because of this a lot. She was known for her hourglass figure, her bleach blonde curls, and for her husky, breathy voice, which has been copied by many actors since then. Unfortunately, she was manically depressed, and she suffered from anxiety and addiction, and this led her to often be late to filming and set and cause strife with the director, and she was often drunk when filming, and all of this, she just suffered from a lot of mental health problems, and this led to her suicide at the end of her life. One of Monroe's greatest legacies is her image. It has been copied, impersonated. It's iconic. Everyone can recognize it. It's all over the place. It's in photos. They've made movies about her. There have been songs written about her. Her name is legendary. She's one of the first and most iconic sex symbols, and her image has endured for a very long time and will continue to endure. Throughout her life, Marilyn experimented with many different religions. At age 18, she was a Christian scientist. This was because one of the foster families she had were devout Christian scientists and pushed it on her and her mother very much when she converted to this at a young age. But she did not hold to this belief. In her mid-years, she often explored a lot of alternative religions and leaned more towards humanism. She held a Freudian psychoanalysis view of religion, that it was more of a wish fulfillment and more of a security blanket than something actual physical. Her co-star in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, Jane Russell, was a devout evangelical Christian and tried to convert Marilyn to this belief. Marilyn said in an interview, she tried to convert me, and I tried to introduce her to Freud. This shows some of her beliefs at the time of this movie. In 1956, however, Marilyn converted to Judaism to marry her husband, Arthur Miller, who was a Jewish man. Though she did divorce him, it is said that she held to this belief through the end. And after her divorce, she met with her rabbi and said that she still believed these words were true. Marilyn had a prized menorah that she set on her mantle that played the Israel National Anthem. It was recently sold at auctions for $112,000. You can also discover a lot about Marilyn's worldview based on what she said and some of her more famous quotes. She said, Imperfection is beauty, madness is genius, and it's better to be absolutely ridiculous than absolutely boring. You can see how this is played out in her life in how she portrayed herself to media and the world around her, and how we view her today. She also said about Hollywood, In Hollywood, a girl's virtue is much less important than her hairdo. You're judged by how you look, not by what you are. Hollywood is a place where they'll pay you a thousand dollars for a kiss and fifty cents for your soul. I know because I turned down the first offer often enough and held out for the 50 cents. This quote is very disheartening, seeing how her life ended and how she turned out, how Hollywood gave her so much anxiety and depression and how it led to her end. She struggled through this famous life that she had. She was more lonely in a crowd than anyone. And she would often give herself to the screen and have nothing left for herself. And this is what ended her life in suicide. When I saw that I had Marilyn Monroe for my project, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little disappointed. I'd always seen her as a very shallow blonde bombshell, and I was never really interested in that. But by learning more and more about her life, I have gained a lot more empathy. She went through a lot. She had a very, very hard beginning that affected the rest of her life. And it it's heartbreaking to see how it all ended. And I wish, I wish someone could have been there for her.
and that she could have come to Christ and met a happy ending instead of the one that she did.